All right, we have some new family members. Yeah. Uh, so Chanel, how'd you feel after your baptism? Good. Just good? Yeah. How'd you feel, Nathaniel? Feel different. How'd you feel, Orlando? Um, oh, awesome. Welcome uh, myself and the child. Well, God's going to do that for you. And how does mommy feel? I'm so excited. Over the yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So, well, let's uh, let's have a prayer. Um, maybe we can gather gather together, gather around a bit. Heavenly Father, we really pray that you go with us all and guide each of us on this wilderness journey and, and bring us to your kingdom, Father. And guide each of us, Father, and be with us and hold our hands because we are just little children, putting out our little childish hands to a loving Father. And may we know you as our Daddy and the Lord Jesus is our Lord and our Saviour and our brother and our friend all the days of our lives. For Jesus' sake, Amen. Amen. Now, we've got some, I think we've got Cindy from, uh, and who else have we got on here? Um, I don't think I've really got a lot of volume on this, guys, but um, you can try and say uh, say something if you want. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try to be as loud, loud as I can. Um, okay, we is, also... This is uh, just so we're all coming around to listen. So this is Siri from Finland. Hello, I'm sorry I don't have the camera on. I just got up, actually. But um, I am so happy to have you all in the family, and it really warms my heart, and it's amazing to start as... I start my day seeing this because I, I get, I get like shivers. I get so happy and excited, and and I just know that you all have made this day so much better, for for not not just for the rest of your family, the rest of your family in Christ, but also for Christ and for God. God bless you and much love from Finland. Her name's Siri, actually, not Finland, but she's in Finland. And anybody else want to say a few things as loudly yeah, as you can possibly can? Can you, can you hear John from Sydney? Ah, uh, John from Sydney. Oh. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm just up the road in Sydney, but I probably can't come down because of the virus. But it's just beautiful to see you all. And I love you all. And just wonderful that you're all in the family. And now I don't even know you, but my brothers and sisters. So that's a great joy for me. So welcome. Hello, I'm Miriam. 
from Queensland. Welcome, my new brothers and sisters. Yeah. Hello. Hi, everyone. everyone. Hello. Hello. This is my in-laws. This is Cindy's parents, Stephen Robin. Hi. Yeah. Yeah, lots of love and uh, hope you have a, new, a wonderful new life in, in Christ. Yeah. All the best. Many blessings. Yeah, it's just a lovely day and we're so good to see you there. Sending lots of love. Yep. What else we got out there? And Rachel and Andrew from Sydney. Hello, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Just want to say, send my love to you right now. And this wonderful feeling that you've got will develop the spirit of Christ in you from here on in. Uh, we we uh, praise God for, for you to come into the truth like this. And, and we pray that he will wrap his arms around you and nurture you in the truth from here this day forward. And we look forward to meeting you in the kingdom. Absolutely. God bless your walk and may it be a short one. I'd <laughs> uh, just like to say, uh, say God bless to you all. Uh, this is Mark from uh, over in Perth, Western Australia. Um, I'm sorry, I actually missed the, uh, the baptisms. I, I was uh, busy working at the time. I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm just so overjoyed that uh, you've actually responded to the gospel message. So many millions of people are, are just so hateful to the word of God and are not interested or they don't think it's for them. Um, but you know from the witness of your mother... Uh, that these things are real, and, and your your mother is no no nutter. Your mother is a is a lovely person, and she deals in realities. And and what we've been called to uh, by the scriptures are real things, even though millions of people disbelieve it. We don't. We have great faith and trust in it. God bless you all, as He already has in forgiveness of sins and bringing you into His family. Uh, may you continue to grow uh, and encourage each other while we're waiting and working for our Lord's return. God bless you all. Anybody else? Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. How awesome. So wonderful to see some people see the light in these dark days. It's awesome. So awesome. May Yahuwah bless you all. And may Yahushua come soon and I'll see you in that glorious day. Have fun. Certainly have fun. You want to say hi to everyone down there? It's beautiful there. Hello, brothers and sisters. It's beautiful there. What a great afternoon. Thank you so much for all your words of wisdom and words of encouragement. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, God bless. God right, bless. Got, so stoked and so God happy that this everybody. could happen. Um, happy so, birthday. Okay. God bless everybody. Bye. God bye. bless. Bye. God bless. Bye. It's love. Um, I fully believe that Jesus Christ died for all of our sins. And I feel like um, by being baptized, it makes me a step closer, um, like a close relationship with Jesus. Right, well, let's start, let's start with a prayer. Let's just start with a prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we come before you and we thank you, Father, that you worked in our lives to bring us to this point, that we're still alive, and that you brought us to relationship with you and with the Lord Jesus. And we really, really pray for Chanel, for Orlando, for Nathaniel, that you'll really bless them in their lives and help them now through doing this to connect with Jesus, that he might be living and real and lord and master of their lives be with them father as they apparently have life in front of them but you will guide them in that one path that leads to your kingdom that leads to everlasting life please be with them father and guide them and bless them in every way and forgive them their sins and give them strength not to go the way of the world not to be losers but to be to be more than conquerors through him that loved them please father be with them and go with them and guide us all 
in that mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So you understand that no one's there, but anyway. Um, you understand that when you go into the water, that's like death with Jesus. When you come up out of the water, it's like resurrection with Jesus. So when you think of when Jesus was, was uh, when he died and when he rose again, there was nobody actually waiting there to shake hands with him. He came out of the grave and he risen from the dead and he's going to live forever. But there was actually nobody there waiting to shake hands with him. And Mary Magdalene was there and she thinks he's the gardener. And she says, hey, mister, what have you done with the body of Jesus? And he sort of says, Mary, it's, um, it's me. Wow. So what I mean is that when he resurrected, he appeared just a normal person, actually dressed like a working man, like a gardener. And so with you guys, when you come out of the water afterwards, well, it's not an anticlimax. Actually, you know, God is watching and you really are going to live forever when Jesus comes back. And so then this life for you now is just like a couple of millimeters. Even if you live to be 100 years old, it's just a couple of millimeters compared to the long, 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 long line of eternity. Everlasting life in front of you. So yeah, when Jesus comes back. So whatever happens now, whether you're lucky, whether you're unlucky, whether you're smart or stupid, whether you have wonderful family life, relationships, or whether you, you know, it just doesn't work out time and again. Well, okay, that's just for now, because you have got in front of you everlasting life, no matter how it goes, whether you lose your legs, you become an invalid, whether you, well, you're gonna die, we're gonna die eventually. It's just a couple of moments compared to eternity. So, Jesus died and rose again so that we might be forgiven. And I'm sure you're not big time criminals, but we all have a conscience that we are not as we would need to be. And we also have a deep conscience, I think, that unfortunately I will never be. But whatever your weaknesses are, you will actually never get on top of all of them. I don't want to be defeatist, but. I'm afraid that's how it is. When you go to your grave planks at the end of your life, imperfect, not perfect, but imperfect. And so actually to be forgiven, but it's all okay now, is a wonderful thing. That sin is actually a big problem, although nobody wants to recognize it. Everyone here thinks, you know, I'm awesome. That's what we all tell you, are awesome, you're awesome. And we all think, well, I'm not really, um, and we're not really awesome. But we are forgiven, and we are right with God. And what we all need, what we all look for, is that perfect relationship. And you never quite get it. Be it in family life, be it in personal relationships, be it in friendships or whatever. You never quite get it. But we are built to want a relationship. And the whole key of it all is that Jesus is there, that Jesus is real, that he, he is actually there, and that man is not alone. And that we actually are all looking for him and that we do have this hole in our hearts that only Jesus can fill and that's the most amazing thing that that intuitively we know I want this so when I ask you all just now why do you want to be baptized it's hard to say why actually and the truth is I've got a feeling that I should do this that's the truth of it but there's there's a hole in our hearts that only Jesus can fill in the end and so you might remember the bible story of when israel were in egypt the, Jew, the hebrew people were in egypt and they were slaves building pyramids and having a totally dumb life and they wanted out they wanted something better than that and so god opened the red sea and the water divided there was water on both sides of them and there was a cloud as it were on top of them and so Paul says they were, as it were, baptized in the cloud and in the sea. The cloud is just water. And the whole thing opens up as a parable that there they were in Egypt. And Egypt is like the world. And wanting out, like all of us, we want out. We, we realize that this is all not quite for me. I don't want to just go the way everyone else does. And so God has opened that way. And we 
leave Egypt, we leave the world when we're baptized. But when they came out the other side of the Red Sea, they were not in the promised land. They were in the desert, in the wilderness. And they had to walk through that desert for 40 years. And God fed them every day with manna. It's like bread that appeared from heaven. And what that represents is that when we're baptized, this world is a desert, spiritually speaking. It's like a wilderness. There's no water. There's nothing great at all. And yet God gives us this manna, this bread. And that really is in the Bible. So I really encourage you to read the Bible daily. Now, I think you've all got the app and you can just read the Bible daily. That is your daily food. That is your bread. And that is what will sustain you in, in, in the journey. And you will get there unless you're stupid enough to go back to Egypt. But you're not, you're not little kiddies. I mean, you've seen Egypt. But there is unfortunately a, a human tendency to think that this is great. And now my life is not great and the future is not particularly wonderful. But that's a human tendency to think that the past was better. Whereas for us, the best is ahead. And, you know, no turning back. Just don't go back, but go forward. But the best is ahead, even in, in, when all is said and done in this world. The future is everlasting life with God and with Jesus. And that is what he has prepared for us. And that is what we will get. Now, the most simple thing in the end is that God actually loves you. When you love somebody, you actually like them. And we think, well, how would God love me? Well, he does. And he has this special, special interest in us. This special interest in every single one of us. Uh, he knew us right from the beginning of the world. And he arranged it so that we would come to this moment. And we find it very hard to believe that someone would love me. That somebody would be that interested in me. That they would make that effort with me. But that is what Jesus has done. That is what God has done. And we talk about a personal relationship with Jesus. And that is just what it is. That we are brought to this point of baptism. And it is like he's holding your hand. And he will hold your hand beyond that. He will hold your hand right, right to the end. Absolutely right to, um, right, right to the end. So that... As I keep saying, man is not alone. God is in search for you. And in the parable of the lost uh, sheep and the lost coin, you know, the guy's going with sheep and he loses one of them. But then when he finds it, he brings it home and he invites all his neighbors around. And there's this great rejoicing. And Jesus said, so there is a joy in heaven when one sinner repents. And there really is joy. I mean, beyond the sort of steely silence of the skies there is God there there is Jesus there and this is the the key to it all that that we are not alone that he really is looking out for us and that he really has huge joy in every little move that we make towards him if for example you are holding your phone in your hand and you're about to look at something that you know is not is not good, it's not spiritual. And you think, no, stop, I ain't going to do that. Wow, there's like joy out there in heaven. When you're going to college or work or whatever you're doing and you get your phone out and say, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to just uh, read the Bible. I'm going to read a chapter. I'm going to listen to a chapter. There's joy up there in heaven. But wow, someone's moving towards me. Someone's yeah, responding to my love. And as you go on, you see that, that this is real, that there is this, if you like, the invisible man, Jesus, that he's there, although you can't see him, but he's there. Uh, and he's real. And sure, you don't see sort of miracles and he doesn't sort of come and appear and shake your hand every now and again. But the wonderful thing is that you get more and more persuaded that he is real and that you know, 2,000 years ago or whatever, he really did die for me. And if you ask yourself, why did Jesus die on the cross? Well, he died on the cross for a lot of reasons, but one of them was 
so that we would get it, so that we would understand that actually he does love me. You know, 2,000 years ago, on a day in April, on a Friday afternoon, there in Israel on a hill just outside Jerusalem, Jesus really did die. And after three days, he did come back to life, and 40 days later, he ascended to heaven, and he just as surely will come again. And so, when you look at it like that, you know, he did all that, and he looks at you three guys here in Port Melbourne, going into the water, especially your young people. I mean, what are most young people doing on an evening? They're studying, they're drinking, smoking dope or whatever. I don't know what they do in Port Melbourne, but probably something like that. Fornicating or getting on with whatever their stuff is. And you guys have decided consciously to give yourselves to the Lord Jesus. Uh, and you don't realize it at the time, but this is, he is there rejoicing over you. That, wow, Nathaniel, wow, Chanel, wow, Orlando, wow, they, they've come to me. They've responded. It's a bit like some guy who's totally decided with some girl, and he sends her flowers, and he sends her messages, and there's apparently no response, or she says, oh, yeah, I'll talk to you later. I'm a bit busy with my schoolwork at the moment, or I'm a bit busy at work at the moment. And the guy thinks, oh, Hank, yeah, I guess she's not interested. And then suddenly, out of the blue, she phones him up and says, you know, I'm interested. Or you know, what, other way round, or whatever way round it is. And it's even more wonderful than that. This is how it is between us and Jesus. So, I want to ask you, each of you, sort of, uh, you know, formally, as it were. Okay, Chanel, do you believe... Do you believe the things about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ? Yes. Hey, Nathaniel, do you believe the things about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ? Yes. And Orlando, do you believe the things about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ? I do. You do. Yeah, I know you do. So we're going to baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus. But let's just have another prayer before we do that. And then we go down to the water. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we come to thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts that you are real and that Jesus is real and that you really have called us and that we in our small stumbling way have said yes to you. Please hold the hands of each of your, children, your new children here, as it were. Hold their hands to the end and bring them through the wilderness into your wonderful kingdom. Please, Father, forgive them their sins. Fill them, Father, with your Holy Spirit. Give them a heart for you. And help them to truly become the seed of Abraham and to have in their hearts the great hope that is before them, the hope of the true Israel, the, the, the hope of your kingdom. And please make it real to them and strengthen their, their hands to go your way and to not look back to Egypt, but to go forward. For Jesus' sake, amen. Right.